Microsoft just announced it will be acquiring Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion in an all-cash deal. That's right, I said $68.7 billion all cash. There are not many companies that have the economic firepower to easily pull that off. When the deal closes, Microsoft will become the third largest gaming company by revenue behind Tencent and Sony. This planned acquisition includes iconic franchises from Activision, Blizzard, and King Studios like World of Warcraft, Diablo, Overwatch, Call of Duty, Crash Bandicoot, Candy Crush, and much more. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly why this is such a great acquisition and how it fits into Microsoft's broader strategy to dominate the video game industry. My name is Zach and you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. So what is Activision Blizzard? It owns many video game studios and franchises divided under the units of Activision, Blizzard, and King. Activision is known for Call of Duty, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, Sekiro, and Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Here are some of the recent games. If you are unaware, Call of Duty is the cash cow here. They typically have annual releases for their core game, but they also have Call of Duty Warzone, which is a free-to-play battle royale game that's very popular. They even have Call of Duty Mobile for phones and tablets. Recently, they rebooted the Crash Bandicoot franchise, which I was quite happy about since that was one of my favorite games as a kid. Blizzard's biggest franchises are Diablo, World of Warcraft, Overwatch, and Starcraft. These are iconic games with highly engaged communities. Most of these games stay active and popular for many years, sometimes even decades. This level of community engagement is rare to find, and they haven't lost their magic. Overwatch was their newest hit, which was released in 2016 and still has millions of active players and a thriving esports community. Overwatch 2 is currently in development. Finally, King is one of the largest mobile game developers in the world. It's best known for Candy Crush Saga, Bubble Witch Saga, Farm Heroes Saga, Diamond Diaries Saga, and Pet Rescue. Now I have less personal insight into these games, but all you need to know is that they're widely popular and print money. They are also developing a Crash Bandicoot mobile game, which shows willingness for intellectual property crossover between studios. With these three business units, Activision Blizzard is an absolute gaming powerhouse across console, PC, and mobile. Each segment is highly profitable and offers great diversification across the gaming industry. Honestly, it's a near perfect strategic acquisition for Microsoft. The best part was that they didn't have to pay an outrageous price. Activision's stock has been beaten down over the past year due to a plethora of scandals. There was lawsuits and rampant accusations of sexual harassment and a poor culture. I don't have any special insights about that, but the end result was the stock being beaten down. However, the company has been financially killing it. In fact, I was considering doing a stock review video and adding it to my portfolio. Microsoft bought the company when it was weak. I have little doubt that in a decade we'll be looking back at this deal as an absolute steal. So how does this acquisition fit into Microsoft's broader gaming strategy? Despite being known for the Xbox console, this is not where the money is made. Instead, Xbox revenue mainly consists of subscription services and sales of first-party and third-party games. Xbox Live has been the cash cow with over 100 million monthly users. However, Microsoft has been strongly pushing a transition to a newer service called Xbox Game Pass. This subscription offers access to a library of over 100 games that you can download and play. It's available for $9.99 a month, but for $14.99 a month you can get Game Pass Ultimate, which includes Xbox Live. This service is a fantastic value considering most games cost between $30 and $60. Game Pass now has over 25 million subscribers and is the future of Xbox. The gaming ecosystem is evolving. The importance of the video game console is decreasing. Desktops, laptops, tablets, and mobile devices are becoming more powerful and convenient for gaming. Also, there is one game-changing technology on the horizon. This is cloud gaming. Microsoft is leading the charge here, leveraging their Azure cloud data centers. A beta version of this is already available for Xbox Game Pass. This means that you can stream games directly to your Xbox console, Windows PC, phone, or tablet. You don't need to download anything and it removes the reliance on powerful hardware to play games. These streaming services will be the future of gaming. The business model will be more like Netflix and Disney+. Plus. In this world, content is king. Microsoft knows this and that is why they have been on an acquisition warpath. In the past, first-party games have been a weakness of Microsoft compared to its peers. Changing this has been their highest priority. 
Xbox Game Studios already includes 343 Studios and The Coalition, who have made popular Xbox exclusives like Halo and Gears of War. In 2014, they acquired Mojang Studios, who created Minecraft. In 2018, they made a slew of acquisitions. They bought Undead Labs, who created the game Stay of Decay. They bought Playground Games, who created the popular Forza Racing series. They also acquired Obsidian Games, who makes high-quality RPGs like The Outer Worlds and South Park The Stick of Truth. Other 2018 acquisitions include Studios Ninja Theory, In Exile Entertainment, and Compulsion Games. In 2019, they bought Double Fine Productions, which has made popular games like Psychonauts. In 2020, they made a massive acquisition to acquire ZeniMax Media for $7.5 billion. This blockbuster deal got them top-notch video game studios and major franchises. This includes Bethesda Game Studios, who makes Fallout and the Elder Scrolls series, id Software, who makes Doom, Wolfenstein 3D, and Quake, Arcane Studios, who made Dishonored and Prey, Machine Games, who made the newer Wolfenstein games, and much more. When you add the Activision Blizzard acquisition on top of this, it's insane. Microsoft now owns some of the best video game franchises and a stable of top-notch video game developers. This latest transaction significantly expands Microsoft's presence in mobile, which is now the largest segment in gaming business. It also dramatically improves their community engagement. Activision Blizzard has nearly 400 million monthly active players across 190 countries today. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella stated they are going to bring as many Activision Blizzard games as they can to the Game Pass subscription service across the PC, console, and mobile. It will be really interesting to see how they integrate this acquisition and what they decide to do with exclusivity but there is no doubt this is a massive value add to Microsoft and Game Pass. You can now make a very strong argument that Microsoft is the best positioned company for the future of gaming. However, there is still significant competition in this space. You have companies like Sony, Tencent, Nintendo, EA, and the rising presence of countless independent creators. Despite this, there is still speculation that the FTC could block this acquisition for anti-competitive reasons. On CNBC, Jim Cramer actually asked the Activision Blizzard CEO about this exact question. A lot of people are saying big three, therefore going to be FTC issues. Uh, they're going to be concerned about concentration in gaming. At the same time, I, I've been saying that uh, there's a gazillion companies in this business and the idea that there's some sort of protection that's needed for uh, gamers it seems a little silly. Uh, how many people do you think are in the universe that are doing what you do? Look, it's a great question, and I would say one of the motivations that we had for a partnership with Microsoft is the recognition of it's a, it's a big market, but there's enormous amount of competition, whether it's Tencent, who has resources that are extraordinary and a global footprint, or Sony, or Facebook, or Amazon, or Apple, or Google, or Netflix, or Disney. When you think about the race for the metaverse and for the more influence in gaming in the gaming ecosystem, we've now seen more competition than ever before. And then if you add to that all the tools that companies like Microsoft make available, like uh, a platform uh, like cloud, you now have user-generated content that's competing in this marketplace. So the competition has never been greater and it's coming from all forms. I think this response was actually spot on. He also mentioned the metaverse. In my opinion, I think that term is so overused. Nonetheless, this acquisition will definitely help Microsoft create digital worlds and entertainment. It's a natural evolution of the business. However, the most interesting part of his response was when he named their competition. He mentioned the other big tech companies, but also Netflix and Disney. Netflix has started moving into video games, and it can definitely leverage its platform to be a significant player in cloud gaming. Disney could very well do the same thing, as they already license out much of their intellectual property for video games. Also, Disney stated wants to be a significant player in the metaverse. This all got me thinking, and I think Disney should buy Nintendo. But that may be a topic for another video. Thank you for watching Dividend Data. I'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you follow me on Twitter, link in the description, you can get real-time updates of my buys and dividends coming in. You can sign up for DividendData.com and try out the free beta test of my dividend investing software. Link in the description. Please leave a comment below and thank you for watching.